Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the channel for another video. As you guys can see, I'm pumped. I'm excited. We got the bike. It is uh, coming apart, as you can see, which only can mean one thing. Let me know if you can take a guess down in the comment section below. But as you know, we're about to start the dream build on the KLX 140. Now, as you guys can see, we've got it kind of teared apart, got all the plastics off it. We're making it nice and clean and it's gonna come and get disassembled a whole lot more. Now, most of you would know what we're doing to the bike if you watched our last video, building my dream KLX 140. Now, if you guys know, we're doing a BBR slash T-Bolt 170 big bore kit and a whole other bunch of goodies. Now what are we gonna do today? Well, we're gonna load the bike up to my mechanic shop and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the build on the bike and do the big bore kit on the engine. Now you guys had asked to see what it's like to pull apart one of the KLX 140s and I just wanna give a shout out to Hades Omega Moto YouTube channel. This is gonna be his background footage for the next 30, 40 seconds, just showing how to disassemble the engine and we'll hop back right back into the video. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the camshaft chain covers, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the intake and exhaust valve adjusting caps and we're going to remove the plug and the alternator cover we're going to line the alternator t-mark through the site window then we're going to set the engine to tdc then we're going to go ahead and remove the camshaft tensioner the rocker shaft holder we're going to remove the camshaft then there we have some six millimeter and eight millimeter head bolts we're going to go ahead we're going to pull those guys out then we're going to remove the cylinder head we're going to remove the front camshaft chain guide then we're going to remove the cylinder base remove the piston and the installation process is a bit more complex but this will give you an idea of the job you can pick up a kawasaki repair manual with instructions if you wish to tackle this job at home the next day all right and just like that we got the bike back from the shop it is built we got the 170 cc big bore kit is in we got the hot cam in and now it's time to do all the rest of the supporting mods now for you guys that are curious that are at home watching and want to maybe do this to your bike let's go ahead i'm going to talk about just a couple things i found interesting when i was talking to the engine builder now the first thing is in reference to the cam and the valve positioning now with the aftermarket camshaft the valves are going to be a little bit tighter on the tight end of within spec compared to the, on the loose end so that's just something to note if you're doing this that your valves are going to need to be a little bit tighter uh, otherwise you're gonna have quite a bit of noise and chatter coming from the engine now the part that i found really fascinating is what he found inside of the cylinder so let's go ahead and let's take a peek at it so here we have the original cylinder now if we take a look on the inside if we look right on this ring here you guys can actually see that it's starting to corrode now how do you have rust or corrosion starting on the inside of a cylinder water's getting in there well how does water get in there you tell me that's just something i found very interesting that there is actually a little bit of rust forming in the inside of the cylinder but nonetheless we got a new cylinder we got a new piston we got the big bore kit is in and ready to rock and roll. So now let's go ahead, let's jump into some porting mods and let's show you what we're gonna need to do next. Now, just for you guys at home that are curious, well, you know, what does a 170 sound like with a stock exhaust? Let me just go ahead and quickly fire it up before we go ahead and jump into the next step. So this is with the upgraded cam and the big bore kit on a stock pipe. It's still cold. It really doesn't sound any different. Same as normal, so, so it really doesn't sound any different than the stock bike. Now, when we first put the big bore kit in and you're trying to get it to run, it doesn't want to run at all with the stock carb in it. But we're going to be ditching that carb anyways. As you guys know, we got a genuine VM26 Makuni carburetor to go on the bike. Since the exhaust has not come in, we've been waiting for BBR to release their brand new D3 pipe. If you guys don't know, that's the pipe we're going with. As I said, BBR build. But in the meantime, we still have the stock pipe. And you guys know that I'm going to want to get out and ride this thing as soon as possible. So what are we going to do? we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the core out of this stock exhaust so let's go ahead let's pull the core out and then we'll see what it sounds like and then we're gonna start adding some more parts to it so to be able to start pulling the core out we just got an allen key up here and we got two more on the bottom down here and then we got three eight millimeter bolts here we'll pull that and we'll just pull the core right out it should come right on out and that's what makes your bike really really quiet so let's go ahead and let's stick the cover back on let's fire this thing up <laughs> Okay, that sounds crazy. <laughs> oh. Okay, I was not expecting that. That thing sounds absolutely insane. I can't wait to actually hear what it sounds like when we got the actual pipe on. It's gonna look so sick too with the carbon fiber and everything. But anyways, that's that. That sounds crazy. Let's jump into the next thing. So now that we've put in the new cylinder head and the piston, let's go ahead and just briefly talk about that. So we so stock the bike comes with a nine and a half to one compression ratio, and we've bumped that up to ten and a half to one compression ratio, as well as it's a new aluminum cylinder, and we've got a 63 millimeter piston inside of it. Now, not only did we do the big bore kit, but we also did the upgraded camshaft. Now, what is the upgraded camshaft provide it's going to give you a much more aggressive race style power band throughout so that's going to be really exciting to try especially when we're out in the trails and you just want to get on it and rip it 
You should expect the bike to still start up easy and run just as normal, just having more power. Who doesn't want that? So now we're here making all this extra power. Let's go ahead and let it rev up some more. So here we got a BBR rev box. Now, what exactly does this do? The first thing it does is raises the rev limiter up by another 1200 RPM. Now this bike already revs out to over 10,000 RPM. So now we're gonna scream this thing past 11,000 RPM with more power. How sick does that sound? So that's why we picked that thing up. Not only that, it has a hotter advanced curve, which is gonna give you better performance. And an extra little bonus, it's a direct plug and play swap. You don't need to do anything extra. You just take this box and we're gonna plug it in. So let's go ahead, let's jump into it and pull the old one out and let's stick our new BBR rev box inside. Now to find your box, we're just gonna come to the front of the bike and here we have our stock ignition box. So we go ahead and all we gotta do is slide this up out of its rubber and then we just got two plugs here. All right, so here we have our new BBR rev box. We're gonna slide that down into its cover. We're gonna plug these guys in. All right, and just like that, we got that BBR rev box installed. That ain't going nowhere. I know the one last thing that's for the engine in specific, we need to swap the carbs out. So this is a carb conversion on the bike. So the first thing we have to do is actually pull off. Here's our factory choke right here. And we actually have to remove this as the new carb uses a completely separate choke. You gotta pull the carb completely out as this carb is way too small. So factory, this bike comes with a 20 millimeter carb. And here, as you guys have seen before, we have a genuine VM26 Makuni carburetor. So this is what we're gonna be using and installing. And as you guys can see, it has its own choke on the side of the carburetor. So let's go ahead and let's just remove that choke like this. All right, just like that, that's off and out here. So now I need to go ahead and we're just gonna disconnect the whole rest of the carb. All right, now, as you guys can see, we've got uh, the carb separated up here at the engine. Now, the reason we're doing it at the engine is we need to use an adapter for our new carburetor. So we gotta pull the old flange out. Be careful, this is when you don't wanna drop anything in the hole in the engine there. Out comes the old tiny carburetor. Now we need to disconnect the throttle and we're gonna need to remove the entire throttle cable. You'll see why. All we're gonna do is keep twisting, keep twisting until this cap wants to come off and it should pull the slide and the spring. We're gonna slide it out to the side, you see that? It was down in that hole. We're gonna pull the spring all the way up so we can pull the cable up through that side hole. Just like that, boom. Now we've got our throttle separated. Go ahead, we're just gonna stick this all back inside of here for now. So now we need to go ahead, we need to take this throttle cable and then we need to remove it from the actual throttle as we have a conversion cable. So here we have our conversion cable, thank you by tbparts.com. We're also gonna head, we're gonna take this, fold this back. We're gonna undo these two screws so we're able to disconnect the throttle cable from here. And then we need to undo the nut that's here to be able to pull the cable completely off. And so we crack that guy loose. Now we actually have to disassemble these two screws here. Pull that guy out. Should take this cover off carefully. Ran down in there. We'll pop that guy out. Now they're separated. Now we can go ahead and we'll start putting our new one right back in. All right, and just like that, we got the new cable routed in. We got the old one removed and stuck back in the old carb over there. We gotta get that new carb tuned up and dialed in. So if you guys wanna see us dial in this carb, get it set up right, running right, and learn everything about it, go ahead and check out the next episode. That's all for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you go down below, leave a like button, click subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one where we stick the carb in the bike and let's get it going.